up next on Hudson Church. Which isn't a get out of jail free card. I mean, Jesus is really a get out of jail free card. However, we want to respect that grace. We want to honor that grace. We want to stand on that grace. We want to show other people grace. We don't just use the grace card to do what we want, to live, you know, in the world saying, you know, I'm covered by grace. Amen. Um, so I want to, um, we're going to get right into the message, praise God. You know, um, I wanted to talk about a few things this morning. And I wanted to share with you um, a review of sorts. That's something I've been meditating on and chewing on, reviewing the word, reviewing our notes, reviewing God's revelation in my life. We should be reviewing answered prayers. You know, when we go to God, we go expecting. We should review those things. We should write it down, right? And so... Um, it was Habakkuk 2-2, two, two, right? The Lord says, if, you know, write the vision down and make it plain. We should be writing it down. Our prayers, our requests, our times with God, revelation, we should be writing it down, making it plain, and reviewing and reviewing. Everybody say review. review. Amen. Review. And when I minister, I'm not typically a, pa a, 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 a minister that will have you talk to the person next to you. <laughs> I, I don't I don't do that. I have done it before. I think it's important that we talk to ourselves. I talk to myself. You know, I do that amongst other things. I do a lot of weird things, but I think it's important that we talk to ourselves, right? So as many of you guys see, I serve in different ministries and I I love to serve, you know, and God did that, right? I didn't do that. God did that. Um because I like to sleep, too, so I know that he did that, you know, but I receive it, and I, I walk in it because he did it, and there are many opportunities to serve here, and as we continue to grow as a church, there's going to be many more opportunities for you to serve and grow, so I want everyone to say opportunities, opportunities, opportunities. I want you to write it down, because we're going to come back to that in a little while, um, but just because you see me serving doesn't mean that you know me. We're going to hold on to that title. Sorry, but thank you. Now that you guys know, but that's all right. Um, you, you see me serving, but it doesn't mean that you know anything about me, right? So I think it's important that you get to know us as ministers of the church, pastors of the church. You should know who we are. So I want to share something. Um, my work is, schedule is very unique. <laughs> I've been placed in a very unique situation. So I want to start by saying, like, my work gets done by the time most people are getting up in the morning. Um, and because of that, um, because I'm done with my work uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm able to kind of get a lot of different things done throughout the day, which makes me available. I work in a very unique industry, so I'm not only available to serve my business, but I'm able to serve my friends and my family. Um, and then the Lord gave me a house in a very unique location, so I can pretty much be here as needed at the drop of a hat, a dime. I don't know what saying it was. I didn't look it up, but you guys get the point. So again, I didn't do that, right? God did that. And I think it's important that you know that the moment that I surrendered my heart to him, he moved everything out of the way to make a, pla a path like clear, clear to him. He made that way, right? Jesus made that way because he is the way. Hallelujah. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. He is my life. So what I did right there is shared a little bit about myself is sharing Jesus, is sharing the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's me, right? That's my unique situation, and we all have a unique situation um, to share, to show, and to tell. And I know that I just equated sharing the gospel to show and tell, and some of you might have caught that, and some of you didn't, but it is a show and tell. We show people the love of Jesus, and we tell them about 
the good news that he has for them. Amen. Everything that he's done for them. So I started this message with review, and I wanted to share and review some things from the last two messages that I gave while I was up here. And sometimes when we're up here as ministers, and maybe we don't always talk about this, but we don't always get through you know, everything that we write down, everything that the Spirit gives us, right? So sometimes we have to, you know, we the Spirit moves and we want to move with it. So the Spirit knows what we need in that moment. So he might give us a, a download and then what gets ministered here is going to be in parts of that, right? So um, I wanted to just talk about the last two messages because when the Holy Spirit gave me that message. I knew that it would be a three-part message. I just didn't know how it was going to come about. So I ministered about how God likes new things. Amen. Um, And that we, we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we become a new creation, right? And you can find that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But Jesus changed my life and he changed my whole life and he made it brand new. And And when I share even part of that, right, we're sharing the gospel. I'm sharing the gospel. So if you accepted Jesus, he gave you a brand new life, even if it doesn't feel that way. Or maybe if you think it doesn't look that way, you have a brand new life. And when you share even part of that with someone, you are sharing Jesus. Amen? That that you love them despite of the the mess-ups, and he loves you despite the mess-ups. So he gave you a new life, and you want to share that new life with someone else. Amen. Amen. When you bless someone with your resources, you're sharing Jesus. Amen. When you're sharing your word, when you're sharing your time, you're sharing Jesus. Um, In Matthew 25, you know, Jesus said, you saw me hungry. You saw me thirsty. You saw me homeless. You know, you, I was in jail and you, you fed me, you gave me water, you clothed me and you, or you came to visit me. Amen. And, and Jesus says that the, the righteous will ask, you know, when did we see you this way? When did we see you sick, naked? When did we see you in prison? And we can just go to Matthew 25, 40 to see his response in the TPT. And the king will answer them, don't you know when you cared for one of the least of these, my little ones, my true brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love for me. So when we're sharing what God has done in our lives, we're sharing Jesus. And I think sometimes we overthink it. We think we have to have all the scriptures memorized. I have to know what scripture I stand on. I have to share, you know, a a, a whole, you just share the love of Jesus, what he did in your life, what he does all every day. Amen. Amen. You know, we need the spirit to do this, Hudson Church. We need the Holy Spirit. So you know, when we share our resources and we share our love, our time, you know, we can do all things through Christ. Praying in the spirit strengthens us, guides us, you know, lets us know which way do we go. So we learn about what resources we have through the word and then through the spirit. He shows us how to disperse those resources. He shows us what is good ground. What does this person need? This person needs, needs a hug, needs a prayer, needs a word, needs counseling, needs finances, needs food, needs clothes. Through the spirit, when we try to do this in our own power, we're going to fall short. And we want to be a blessing. We don't want to be a temporary band-aid. Amen? Amen. So I wanted to just share this scripture. Um, I just wrote down here, we need the Holy Spirit so you can be bold to speak about how Jesus transformed you into a new creation and how he's doing a new thing in your life. So I want to share the scripture that I shared on Friday during the women's. This is this is actually my favorite scripture and it's Psalms 40. And it says, "I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry." Verse 2. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. You know, I cry to the Lord. I don't know about you, but maybe you cry to the Lord. And you look at where he's pulled you out of. We're not always looking. We shouldn't always be looking at where we are right now. We should always be looking ahead to the Lord, but always 
keep in mind where he pulled you out of. Amen. In verse 3, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. When people see what God is doing in your life, when you talk to them about it, when they haven't seen you for a while and they're like, you're different. That's Jesus. That's only Jesus. Amen. This is what we were created for, Hudson Church. We are the salt of the earth, that preserving agent, a light on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are that light, Hudson Church. Amen. That light is a light to the world so that we may help give light to all through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew 5, we're going to look at Matthew 5, please. Just going to review what I just said because we'll always want to take it back to the word, right? Because it could sound nice. And if you don't know the word, you're like, oh, she did like something there. Was that a poem? No, that's the word of God. It says, you are the sight, the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, we should be reading Hudson Church. How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Praise God. You know, previous to that message, because we're, we're reviewing, right? I had ministered about how we bench ourselves. How Jesus is the best coach. He wants to see us go, go, go. Right? He wants to put us out there. He's the best encourager. And how even encouragers need encouraging. And in my notes, I didn't get to this part. I had this um, portion of scripture where Paul writes and um, in Galatians and he calls out Peter for being one way around the Gentiles and being another way with the Jewish brethren, right? When the Jewish brethren came to visit, he stopped hanging out with the Gentiles and he cleaned up, you know, quote unquote, his act and he was very Jewish. <laughs> and I, Paul basically calls him a hypocrite, right? But I promise this was very encouraging um, <laughs> because I believe that Peter was very humbled by this. You know, Peter went on to do many great things through the Spirit. And I believe that when Paul wrote this and he, he was called out, he was humbled by this. And maybe he was a little embarrassed at first, but he was convicted to look at his behavior and make a change. And then he was able to encourage others to make a change because Peter knew that he was free. Amen? He's free from condemnation. He's free from guilt. He's free from shame. He was free from resentment. Amen? He was free from resentment. And all of those other feelings, negative feelings, that can be associated with being called out, knowing that he was free. Hudson Church, do you know that you're free? Do we know that we're free? Say, I'm free. That's right. We talk to ourselves. Amen. And you know why we're free? Because the word of God says that you're free. <laughs> Amen. The word of God says that you're free. Jesus set us free. Amen. Luke 418. Please. Thank you. Nicole. Luke. Por favor. Thank you. Hallelujah. So we know that this is also in Isaiah, right? So we have a little bit of Bible knowledge. We know that we can read this. And then this is Jesus reading from the scroll, right, in the temple. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. 
Hudson Church, we were all captives to sin. And Jesus came and set us free. I have another scripture for us, Colossians 2.20. Colossians 2.20 says, therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? 21. Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. 22. Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. 23. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Evil desires. We are free, Hudson Church. We are free to live because Jesus died for us and gave us that freedom. Amen? So rules don't really apply to us. However... Grace covers um, all of our sin, which isn't a get-out-of-jail-free card. I mean, Jesus is really a get-out-of-jail-free card. However, we want to respect that grace. We want to honor that grace. We want to stand on that grace. We want to show other people grace. We don't just use the grace card to do what we want, to live, you know, in the world saying, you know, I'm covered by grace. That's not what it's there for. That's not what he died for. Again, we want to show Jesus. We want to show people how we live. We want to show what he did. We want to show that we're a new creation. We're not the same old. Amen? Amen. Mm. And I, clo I wanted to close out that message with this Colossians 4. And let's read along. There's a few scriptures we're going to read and it was titled um an, an encouragement for prayer right so to that message this is how i wanted to close out but again the holy spirit moves we always want to move with it so i knew that it would come up and praise god and he's given me the opportunity let's say opportunity opportunity, opportunity to share these scriptures colossians 4 2 and it, let's read together it says devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Verse 3. Pray for us too that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysteries, mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Verse 4. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Amen. Verse 5. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity, Hudson Church. Verse 6, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Isn't that beautiful? The instruction, it's so plain, it's so clear. Let our speak be beautiful, be gracious, be attractive. Amen? So that we will have the right response for everyone. Praise God. I don't know about you. I always feel very encouraged by God's word, by his plan. Amen? His love, his faithfulness, his goodness. He's so good. And we really should all be encouraged. Amen? That our confidence is not in anything that we can do, but everything that Jesus already did. Amen? That we would get off the bench and walk on the path that he already laid out for you. And even if we mess up, that we would be encouraged to repent, to go to him, to talk to him. Amen? That we be encouraged to make a change and to help others make a change. Amen? 
So as you know, the title of the message for today was Opportunity. God wants us to seize each and every opportunity. Amen? Amen. To serve him. Opportunities to serve him. Opportunities to encourage an encourager. My sister Essie, you're my encourager. I hope that you're encouraged. I love you. That we would be bold and confident in him, not in our own power. That we would correct in love. Amen. That we be a blessing because we are so abundantly blessed. Hudson Church, we are already abundantly blessed. Even if you think you don't see it, even if you think you don't feel it, you are already abundantly blessed. Amen. So I want to close out with a few of these scriptures, Galatians 6.10 in the Amplified, and it's, let's read together. So then, as occasion and opportunity open up to us, let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith. Those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. Let us do good to each and every one, but especially to the brothers and sisters, our family, that God gives us an opportunity that we would look out for those opportunities, that we would be on alert for those opportunities that he gives us to be a blessing to each other, especially, but also those that are non-believers. Amen. Let us use every opportunity not to squander our freedom in Christ, but continually be a blessing to each other. Galatians 5, 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Do you see these scriptures? I didn't do this, Hudson Church. God did this. Scriptures are amazing. He's telling us how to love each other, how to serve each other, how to live with each other. Ephesians 5, he says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. 16, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Are we living in evil days, Hudson Church? If you're not sure, hmm. Need to come to church. Don't even worry about the news. Just come to church. <laughs> Amen. Verse 17. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 19. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourself, making music to the Lord in your hearts. Amen? Amen. Verse 20. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Do we want to give God a shout offering of thanks? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let us seize every opportunity to share the gospel. Colossians 4. Amen. It says, walk in the wisdom of God as you live before the unbelievers and make it your duty to make him known. Verse 6. Let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity. For then you will be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks you about your faith. Do you see that in a different version? We can go deeper and deeper into these scriptures. We already read this scripture, but here it is in another version. Be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity. If you don't know what the word tempered is, it means to be strengthened. Anybody ever buy something and it says tempered glass, right? That means glass that's not easily broken. It's been put through the fire. It's been strengthened over and over. So just a little something for you to write it down and come back to later. Amen. So I want to just talk about this a little bit. Let us make sure that we take 
every opportunity, Hudson Church, but that we're not giving up opportunities. Let us not give up opportunities to the enemy. And I think it's important because when we open the door, he's going to slip in. And, you know, mistakes happen, right? So I had talked about how we have to live in the, in the rule and not the exception, right? And Jesus is really the rule. That grace over our life is really the rule. And the exception is the mess ups and the mistakes that we make. And so we want to be one way with our Christian brethren and be another way in the world, right? We want to walk with Jesus all the time. But sometimes we make a mistake or we, we sin or whatever it is. And the enemy now is trying to get a foothold. He's trying to get a little toehold. So I want to just look at some of these scriptures with you, right? And remember that when Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he was fasting, and here comes the enemy after the 40 days. It didn't come on the first day. It didn't come in the first week. He came after 40 days when he thought Jesus would be at his weakest, right? So when we look at Luke 4 and 13, we're going to look at this in the New Living Translation. This really popped out to me because it says the devil had finished tempting Jesus and left him until the next opportunity came. You know, and we may come together in fellowship and in love and say, okay, I'm dealing with this situation. I'm going through this suffering. I'm going through uh, whatever, this trial. And we come together in fellowship and, and we're receiving love and we're casting out and we're believing through the situation. And then something happens and maybe we, there's a moment of doubt or we falter or we fall back into something else. And here's the enemy the word says he roams around like a prowling, like a growling, gr roaring lion, growling, grumbling, whatever. He's a loser. So he rolls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. And what I think is, up, is, is important for us to see when we look at the scriptures and we confirm these things with more than just one scripture. You know, I learned a little bit about how animals or lions hunt. You know, they don't just pounce on the first thing that they see. They're looking for a weakness. They're looking for separation. They're looking for an opportunity. They're calculated. They don't just grab, you know, whatever comes through their path. So it's important to know that we have an enemy who's out there lurking, looking, learning, waiting for that opportunity. He's looking for the straggler. He's looking for the one that wants to do it alone, the one that doesn't want to be a part of what we're, what's going on here, doesn't want to be part of a local church, who doesn't want to, you know, share what's going on. I can do it myself. I know how to pray. I know how to read. I know what the God has for me. I have my own relationship with God. He's prowling. He's lurking. He's looking. And one day that door may crack open where he will slip in. And then great is his fall. So it's just important that we know this, there's a reason why you're all sitting here together, that we all came here on time to, to hear the word, that we're not all home sitting in our pajamas. And if you are, this is not condemnation. Praise God that you're watching and you're listening to the message and you're getting word in. But there's seats for you. There's space for you. There's a place for you. There's somewhere for you to serve. There's family here for you. There's people waiting to pray over you, to lay hands on you, to be in fellowship with you, to learn about you, to know so that you can come in and learn how to overcome. Jesus overcame so that we can learn to be overcomers over the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in closing, let us use every opportunity to be in the word, to be in prayer, to be in fellowship, to be in worship, to meditate. Let us take every opportunity to seek him while he may be found. That scripture can be found. You don't have to pull it up, Nicole, but that scripture can be found in Isaiah 55, 6. Meditate on that scripture, Hudson Church. Look it up in different versions. Seek him while he may be found in Jesus' name. I pray you were encouraged, that you received something.
Praise God. Hallelujah for this word. It encouraged me. Thank you.